I hope you enjoyed or are still enjoying your dinner. I'd like to introduce this evening's hostess, Francie Hill, and invite her to the stage. Judge Francis Hill, a past member of Bloomington Rotary, is a graduate of Purdue and the Indiana University Mauer School of Law. Francie was appointed to the Monroe County Juvenile Court by Judge Jim Dixon from 1980 to 86, and then elected as a circuit court judge from 2007 to 2018. While working as the Monroe County Juvenile Referee in the early 1980s, she started the Monroe County CASA program. I would like to take just a moment to talk about our dessert. <laughs> Every year, we ask our honoree if they have a favorite food. And when we asked Steve this year, the message I got back was cookies. <laughs> and then I heard that he has been known as the cookie monster in the Justice Building and in probation, that he was very famous for bringing and consuming cookies. So the dessert was picked specially by our honoree, and I hope you enjoy it very much. Bring me the cookies. <laughs> Boy, tonight, Steve, you're in trouble. This will be so much fun, but my husband did remind me that this is a toast and not a roast. So it's gonna have to be really polite, so I'll try to stick to the script. As a past Rotarian and the daughter of a Rotarian, I am so proud of the three Rotary Clubs that come together to do so much good in this community and tonight have worked together in heart, spirit, and enthusiasm to put this program together in which we are honoring Judge Steve Galvin. I have to start. I have to start with a little humor to tell you that in the 80s, I believe that it's true that at one point, Steve did go to juvenile court with a ponytail. But on a more serious note, Tonight we are here to honor a person I am so proud to call friend and to tell you a little bit about his dedication and compassion as a judge and how he personifies service above self. So this will be fun. Steve, if you would please join me. Now, don't be afraid. In your, <laughs> in your own words, Steve, this will be just peachy. I would see him on a day when he had hundreds of cases, and I'd say, how are you? And he'd say, just peachy. Right there in that glamorous chair. Let's start with a bio while he's getting himself comfortable. Judge Stephen Galvin was born and raised in Frankfort, Indiana, the home of the fighting hot dogs. How about that? <laughs> he earned a degree in history and speech from Wabash College and a law degree from IU. Steve has held more legal jobs than a Dalmatian has spots. <laughs> he served as a deputy public defender, deputy prosecuting attorney, attorney for the Monroe County Council, commissioners, auditor, and sheriff, and attorney for the Monroe County Office of Family and Children. In 2005, he was elected to the Monroe Circuit Court, and the following year, he took over the juvenile court, hearing the delinquency cases, child abuse and neglect cases, which are called CHINS cases, and also taking on major civil litigation as a special judge. Judge Galvin was chair of the State Juvenile Judges Bench Book Committee for several years, and locally, he has served on the boards of Martha's House, Hoosier Honor Flight, and the Youth Services Board. Judge Galvin retired last year, but when he is not with his charming wife, Tamara, or his son, Connor, he continues to serve as senior judge when he is needed throughout the state. The other thing I want to tell you 
right from the start tonight is that the group or organization that Steve has picked as the recipient of many of the receipt of the um, the gifts that are given tonight and the money that is raised is CASA. So let me tell you. <laughs> Judge Galvin has chosen to benefit the CASA organization that he has supported and helped to prosper through his entire career. CASA stands for Court Appointed Special Advocates. The Monroe County CASA program recruits, trains and supervises volunteers to investigate and present the necessary facts about each abused or neglected child in the juvenile court and to advocate for their safety and best interest. CASA volunteers, many who are here tonight, speak of Judge Galvin in glowing terms, in terms of his demeanor in the courtroom and his wise decisions. Volunteer advocacy is based on the belief that all children are entitled to a safe and permanent home, and that is the goal of CASA. I would, before I turn over to our first toaster, let me just give a big thanks and shout out to our sponsors. I ask you to take a moment to look at your program and to acknowledge the toast sponsors, and in the words of Sylvia McNair last year, buy stuff from them. <laughs> Use their services. They make it possible for Rotary to do the good work in our community that you have all come to expect. In particular, I would like to acknowledge the extraordinary support of IMA Healthcare Foundation, which has been a platinum sponsor for all nine toasts. Thank you so much. Okay, now we're getting down to it. We're ready for the toasters. So I would first like to invite Connor to come up here. And while he's walking up, I'll tell you a little bit about him. First of all, Connor Galvin is born and raised in Bloomington. He's a graduate of Bloomington High School South. He received his bachelor's degree in chemistry and graduated cum laude from Pomona College in 2000, 2017. Earlier this year, he defended his doctoral thesis and received his PhD in organic chemistry from Stanford University. His research has been published in the Journal of the American Chemical Society and presented at, natural, at national conferences. I would read the title, but I couldn't even understand the words. Uh, let me tell you, this is one sharp guy. So, Connor Galvin, there you go. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for being here tonight. It's my great honor to provide the first of the toasts in honor of Judge Galvin that you're going to hear tonight. And uh, in preparing this toast, someone told me, someone, <laughs> that there's really only one word to describe the honorable Judge Stephen Galvin. Genius. <laughs> I don't think they're buying it, Dad. <laughs> My father sent me up here with a laundry list of other kind terms. Let's see here, we have maverick, uh, disruptor, renaissance man. He was very insistent on that one, but I can see from the reactions of this audience um, that you're not a very gullible lot, and so, Instead of feeding you what my father sent me up here to say, I will share some of my own thoughts uh, on my father and his career. Uh, so my father was the juvenile judge for Monroe County for the better part of two decades. And the work he completed in that time was reflective of the care he had for children, especially the most vulnerable amongst them. His work, both on and off the bench, reflects this desire to make the world a better, a more caring, a more welcoming, and warmer place for the young people that are in it. And I was introduced to this attitude of his from a very young age and the care that he has for the young people. When I was born in 1995, the very first time my father held me and I was only minutes old, and his first words to me, his only son, were, 18 and you're out of here. <laughs> I 
Those of you who worked with my father are no stranger to his dedication and the high standards to which he holds both himself and his work. I remember my father's fastidiousness and his intolerance for completing anything halfway and only accepting a job well done with the best effort put forward. And I remember this in particular when he was helping me with a, a middle school project that involved a little bit of woodworking to complete. We were examining uh, a, a board that we had put into place and I had the level out and I remarked that it looks like the left side is too low. And my father scoffed at me and said, no, the right side is too high. <laughs> my father has always been one to lift up and support the people around him. There are many people in the audience right now who view my father as a mentor and a leadership figure and have benefited from the tutorship and the example that he has set forward. Lifting up the people around him and the belief in the people that he leads has been a hallmark of my father's tenure during his career. And I remember in particular my father's support and his belief in the people around him when I brought my girlfriend home for the first time from graduate school. My girlfriend Vicki is a child psychologist. She works at a children's hospital in Orange County and she works with children who are suffering only the most acute mental health crises, often on top of additional medical issues and familial issues. She is a real life superhero, and I wish she could be here tonight, but she's busy. But after my father had met her and she had spent a couple of days with my family, he took me aside and he told me just how disappointed he was in her for settling for me. <laughs> and that surely someone as talented as she is could do much better. <laughs> and that I was batting way, way out of my league. <laughs> so in all seriousness, please grab your glasses and join me in toasting Judge Galvin. A fixture in this community, both on and off the bench. A leader whose moral compass has always pointed north. And a man I'm extraordinarily proud to call my dad. So he's agreed to finish this out for me because he's pretty darn good, isn't he? Thank you very much, Connor. Now, uh, our next toaster is Judge Mary Ellen Deekoff, so come on down. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her. Mary Ellen Deekoff is a graduate of Valparaiso University and the Indiana University School of Law. She served as an associate at the law firm of Harold Clendenning and Coyne and was first deputy attorney in the Monroe County Office of Prosecuting Attorney. She was elected to the Monroe Circuit Court in 2005 and is responsible for the drug court, the veterans court, and the mental health court, in addition to a demanding criminal docket. Like our honoree, Mary Ellen Deekoff is one hard working judge. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna tell you is, obviously Judge Galvin and I were elected in the same year. Judge Galvin and I took the bench in the same year. Judge Galvin and I went to places together. When you are a five foot two woman and you go someplace with Judge Galvin, people assume you're the paralegal. So when people say to me today, you know, you don't really seem to have much of a big head for a judge, that's right, because I was his colleague. From the beginning when Steve and I took the bench, um, right before we did, the Board of Judges changed the docket on us. And so when we began, we had the same docket. And when we began, we were sort of the newbies together. From the beginning, Steve was always supportive and he was always there when we were trying to figure out our way through being judges. 
My perspective of Judge Galvin was he had done a lot, he had practiced law a lot, he knew a lot. So one day, you don't need the details, but something odd happened in a board of judges meeting. And so I was in Steve's office and we were sort of going through that meeting and I'm waiting for Steve to give me some really good bits of wisdom that was gonna like make some sense of this. And he looks at me and he goes, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. But through the years, Steve and I, uh, we changed dockets and Steve became the juvenile court judge. It was appropriate, it was necessary, and for the people of Monroe County, it was the best thing that could have happened. Prior to that, <laughs> prior to that, there was Judge Talaferro, who was a good friend of Steve's and a good friend of mine. <laughs> Vi was extremely, extremely proud of Steve Galvin. Um, also, being Vi, she took a fair amount of credit for Steve Galvin. <laughs> I mean, she did. But one day after Steve had been on the bench for a while doing juvenile cases, Vi and I were talking and Vi looked at me and she said, you know what's best about him? And I said, what's that? And she said, he gets it. And I said, and what do you mean? And she said, he gets why we do what we do. And it's true. I tell my law students that the practice of law is about people. It will always be about people. People make laws, people break laws, people serve laws, people do all kinds of things with laws, but they are people. Steve Galvin never forgot that. Never forgot that the people he was dealing with in whatever capacity were people. And the people that needed him and his judgment, he was always there for. He is one of the most hardworking, dedicated, committed people I have ever known. And I am proud that he was my colleague. I am proud to call him my friend. And I'm honored to have been here tonight to speak on his behalf. Because Steve Galvin is one of those people that truly, truly, truly gave his all for what he did and the people of this county and the people who he um, met, talked with, dealt with, will always, always be the benefit, beneficiaries of that. And so, at this time, let's raise our glasses to Steve Galvin. We have a very nice treat tonight. District Governor, Rotary District Governor Shannon K. O'Toole will make a special presentation. Thank you. And you guys, this, this is why I'm district governor, to be in a room full of so many passionate, amazing people, and to be the sister of a prosecuting attorney. I kind of understand a lot of this crowd. So, um, but I am very proud. Thank you, guys. And for those of you that are new to Rotary, I just want to share with you our Paul, Fe Fellow, Paul Harris Fellowship is awarded through the Rotary Foundation. And it's awarded to individuals that make a significant impact in our world. The award is named for Paul Harris, who was the founder of Rotary over 118 years ago. Rotary has grown and now has over 1.4 million Rotarians worldwide in over 200 countries, and there's over 46,000 clubs. So there's people all over the world doing just like this. It's, it's amazing. Judge Galvin, I would like to recognize you. Come on over. As a Paul Harris Fellow, you stand with notables such as Mother Teresa, Walt Disney, Pearl Bailey, Nelson Mandela, President Carter, and numerous people in the room. So would all the Paul Harris Fellows stand up, please? Love that. Thank you. Thank you. So on behalf of the trustees 
of the Rotary Foundation, it is my great pleasure to present to you your Paul Harris pin and certificate. Great voice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating and recognizing our newest Paul Harris Fellow. We have one more treat, not a toaster, but a presenter. It's retired Judge Najem from the Court of Appeals. And I think you might know about this, but now a lot of other people are going to know about it. Come on. Judge Galvin. <laughs> Judge Hill. Uh, like Judge Hill, I'm a former Rotarian. My grandfather was a Rotarian, and my father was a Rotarian. So I feel very much at home in a room with so many Rotarians. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to recognize Steve. When I learned that Steve was to be honored by the Bloomington Rotary Clubs, I contacted our Chief Justice, Loretta Rush, and gave her all the information about it and asked if she could attend, and if she could not attend, to please send a letter that could be read at tonight's event. Sometime later, I received in my inbox a document that appeared to be a letter from the Chief Justice of Indiana addressed to Judge Galvin. But you never know something on the internet whether it's true or not. <laughs> so before I can read this letter, it must first be authenticated. And the only person here who can authenticate the letter is tonight's honoree. <laughs> so Judge Galvin, would you please raise your right hand? <laughs> Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please state your name. Steve Galvin. Are you one and the same Judge Steve Galvin who's being honored tonight by the Bloomington Rotary Clubs? <laughs> Did you receive a letter from the Chief Justice of Indiana dated September 21, 2023, commending you for your service as a judge? I do. And do you have an original copy of that letter in your files? <laughs> I've marked Exhibit A. Judge Galvin, I, Judge Galvin, I've handed you a document which, which I've marked for purposes of identification as Exhibit A. Do you recognize that document? Is it a true and complete document, uh, a true and complete copy of the original which you have in your own files? It is. Very good. Okay, having established the foundation for the admission of this letter, the letter from Chief Justice Rush to Judge Galvin is hereby admitted and can be read. Dear Judge Galvin, I am thrilled to extend my deepest congratulations to you on being honored by the Bloomington Rotary Clubs, a true testament to your outstanding contributions to Monroe County. And I was particularly pleased to learn that you are the first member of the judiciary to be honored by the Rotary Clubs. This recognition speaks volumes about the remarkable impact you have had on your community. But your impact has and continues to extend beyond Monroe County. Indeed, your long and dedicated service as one of our state's preeminent juvenile court judges has left an indelible mark on countless Hoosiers. During my time as a juvenile court judge and on the Indiana Supreme Court, 
I have had the privilege of witnessing and consistently hearing about the positive impact of your work. Your dedication to the pursuit of justice, your compassion for those entrusted to your care, and your unwavering commitment to the betterment of Indiana are qualities that exemplify the very best of our judiciary. Your contributions have not only made a profound impact on me, but they have undoubtedly made a lasting difference in the lives of numerous young people who have looked to you for guidance and support during challenging times. In consistently providing that guidance and support, you have truly lived the rotary motto, service above self. And you continue, continue to live that motto by serving as a senior judge, for which I am sincerely grateful. I have no doubt that your legacy will continue to inspire future generations of lawyers, jurists, and community leaders across Indiana. Once again, congratulations on this well-deserved honor. Sincerely, Loretta H. Rush, Chief Justice of Indiana. The third toaster. Are you getting a big head there? Over? No. Okay. Bring it on. Next one, Lindsey Smith. So Lindsey, if you're ready, let me tell you a little bit about him. He earned his bachelor degree from Indiana University and a master's from the University of Southern California. He joined the U.S. Army on the day of his graduation from IU and served a full military career in Germany, Panama, Afghanistan, and the U.S. Following his retirement from the Army in 1995. Lindsay returned to Bloomington. He is the past executive director of the Monroe County Office of Family and Children, where he served this community with compassion and excellence. I give you my friend, Lindsay A. Smith. Thank you all so much. It is so great to be here tonight. And uh, Judge, which I normally refer to him as Steve because I've known him for a very long time. But uh, Judge, uh, I tell you, I thought there was going to be just a few of your close friends here tonight. You got half of Bloomington here. <laughs> Can I tell you? So, but that's a great testament to you and all the great things that you've done. Francie, thank you so much for that introduction. And uh, I am very delighted to be here tonight, to be here to, to celebrate and recognize a very honorable man in Monroe County, Judge Steve Galvin. You've heard Francie announce that uh, for the last 12 years, I shouldn't say the last 12 years, but 12 years that uh, I was the executive director of the Office of Family and Children. When I got that position, I had really had just transitioned from military service and knew nothing about uh, the welfare department, which is commonly known to uh, many of those who are uh, not familiar with the Division of Family and Children's Services. Uh, so anyhow, once I got into to the office, I wanted to get to know the culture and how we do things and that kind of thing. And uh, of course, uh, being new and being having transitioned from the military, the staff was a little bit reluctant to meet with me. I have no idea why. I was really a good guy, wasn't I? <laughs> so anyhow, I ended up uh, getting actually close to uh, Steve as my, he was the county attorney for the Office of Family and Children. And during that time, we had a lot of uh, personal talks after the t uh, hours that the uh, majority of the employees had left the office. We had uh, personal talks about what takes place in the office, how is the office organized, what policies and procedures should go in place. Oh, thank you. Thank you. What policies and procedures should I implement in that type of thing? Steve actually ended up being a very great listener for me as well as offering some very good sage advice that uh, I took advantage, uh, took advantage of. And so many times I would sit there and uh, we would uh, meet together after you know, uh, uh, hours and also on the weekends. So when you say dedication and hard work, you're absolutely correct. Uh, the, the many hours that uh, 
that uh, Judge Galvin would put into the office just to be ready for the next case and uh, for when he uh, appeared before Judge uh, Talaferro. So anyhow, Steve actually became my mentor in getting me uh, more used to, to the office and what I should be doing as a director and kind of put me in the right direction. I, I've never forgotten that. Um, but I would have these personal talks with him. I knew that I wanted to prepare different policies and procedures and, and uh, deal with the office differently than it had in the past. And so I would uh, come up with these ideas. And uh, one of the things that I recall Judge Galvin telling me when I became the new director was, now listen, you got to be careful. The majority of the office are women. And we did. We had a large office of about 60 employees. I think we only had four males in the office. But he, he reminded me that, hey, you're no longer on active duty. You've got to make the adjustment from being a military guy to being now in the civilian workforce. And you have to be able to uh, approach uh, your staff in a way that is going to be a palatable and, and uh, effective way in, in getting the best out of their talents and and uh, you know, just their, their skills and abilities. And so his advice to me was embrace the change. And so that's one of the things that I tried to remember and to try to do. And I think that in doing so, it actually was, was really good advice. But then as I got more used to the job and learning my responsibilities and roles, I found that I had to deal with the county council in Monroe County and appear before them uh, periodically and give a uh, presentation about our budget. And of course, uh, during that time, there was about six or seven members of the county council. Uh, some of them were very resistant to how, what I wanted to do as a new director in that office. And uh, many times is when you present a budget, you would hope that that budget is going to be accepted and approved by those who make that decision. And so uh, when I got resistance from some of the county council, I came back to Steve very frustrated and angry and throwing my papers all over the place. And, and he says, welcome to county government. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the things that he did not warn me, I'm not sure if, you know, but at least uh, advised me about was how do I go into court and present myself in uh, Judge Talaferro's court? If you guys have not met Judge Talaferro, or if you've never known her, you don't know what you're missing. This was a fine lady probably the strongest woman in all of Monroe County who did a fantastic job. She has a tremendous legacy in this, in this county, in the state, and probably nationwide. But here was a woman that actually, she could chew my butt and I would enjoy it. <laughs> uh, she was that good of a person that even though she she would chew you out. She meant to make you better. She wanted you to, to be better. And Judge Talaferro ended up being my best friend. And the same I know with Judge Galvin, that uh, they were very close, had a great, strong relationship. But I didn't have that initial uh, impression when I had to deal with her on a number of cases, many times sensitive cases when I would go into her court in that uh, I would have to explain things to her. And if, if you don't, I mean, here with Judge Talaferro, she was the kind of person that there was no mistake of what she meant and how she felt and how she delivered information to you. No question in her mind. And uh, so when I fell short of that and, uh, and uh, wouldn't meet her expectations or whatever, and uh, by the way, one of the things that when she was really angry with you, she would shake her finger at you as if you're going to learn this lesson, okay? I'm going to teach you a, a lesson, and Judge Galvin knows it as well, and, and actually she 
with me, she kind of so mad, she walked ahead of me and then turned around and just started, you know, waving her finger at me. And that meant she uh, was very angry with you. And uh, you got her point right away. But Judge Talaferro was one of my best friends in all of Monroe County. A person who even when I uh, had made some of the biggest faults, and, and uh, there were many, that uh, she always came back to me and, and showed me her support and, uh, and her love for what I was doing and what the staff was doing. And I know some of them are here tonight. I met a number of our uh, former caseworkers that are here tonight. It's great to see all of you guys here uh, tonight. But anyhow, I just want to let you know, uh, Judge Galvin, how much I appreciated your sage advice, your guidance, your friendship, and just being an all-around good man. So for all of the Rotarians and anyone else that is responsible for setting up this, uh, this uh, event here tonight, I want to let you know how thankful and grateful I am, but I, I'm sure all of you, because you're all here to celebrate this as well, and that uh, you're uh, recognizing a person with, who is worthy of, of uh, recognition, of great recognition. So thanks a lot for all the Rotarians for putting this great event together. And so with that, I would like to propose a, a toast in honor of Judge Steve Galvin. Hear, hear. Judge Galvin. Thank you. The next toaster is Kristen Bechet, and I see that she's on her way. Let me tell you just a little bit about this amazing woman. Kristen Bechet joined CASA as a volunteer advocate 27 years ago and has been the executive director for the last 16 years. She is a member of the State CASA Advisory Commission as well as other state committees. Kristen came to Bloomington to go to IU and she never left. She is a mother of two, but her most favorite hat to wear is that of grandmother and of the four grandees. But don't be confused for a minute. This woman is all about child advocacy, no matter what she says or no matter where she might go in the future years. Ka Kristen Bechet has made CASA a household word, word in Bloomington, and I appreciate it so much. So have at it, Kristen. When I was first told that Judge Galvin's philanthropy of choice for tonight's beneficiary was CASA, it absolutely made no surprise to me. Judge Galvin has been the most fervent and constant advocate and cheerleader of the CASA program than anyone else in the community. Both statewide, locally, publicly, and privately, he has been there to cheer us on. It will be no surprise to me if CASA is part of the legacy he leaves behind. I was given five minutes to talk to you tonight. To sum up 27 years of knowing Judge Galvin, first as an attorney and then as our judge, and I thought, that's impossible. But I came up with a story, true story. Some years ago, a 12-year-old girl came into the care of his court due to severe abuse and neglect by her parents. Her parents' rights were soon terminated, making her an official orphan. This young woman was severely mentally ill, had severe mental health issues. She was violent, kicking out windows of police cars. She was harmful to herself and she was harmful to others. She ran away often. Until she was 18, she was in and out of residential treatment facilities, more often in than out. And she was brought to court in shackles. She was a petite girl. So 13, 14 year old, walking into court in shackles and escorted by two deputy sheriffs. Judge Galvin never gave up on her. He always gave her the forum to speak, to let him know what she wanted him to know. 
He always showed her respect, always kindness. And I probably shouldn't say this, but I think he tried to parent her from the bench. When she turned 18, the case was closed, and she was allowed to walk away. I'll never forget the very last day in court with this young woman. And as she walked out and the door closed behind her, I looked at Judge Galvin, and he had the most worried and concerned look on his face. We all sat there in silence for a few minutes, not knowing what to think. Fast forward 12 to 18 months later, I was outside of Judge Galvin's courtroom waiting for a hearing, and this very same young woman comes up to me and asks if I thought she'd be allowed to talk to Judge Galvin. We waited for the hearing to end, and we went in together. When Judge Galvin looked up from the bench and saw who was walking in the courtroom, the most joyous grin came over his face. He immediately got up from his chair and came off the bench and embraced this young woman. I think it caught her off guard. You see, the sad part of this story is that I don't think she believed that there's one person in this world who would be happy to see her or even be happy to know she was still alive. The best part of the story is that that one person she had was Judge Steve Galvin. So, once again, raise your glasses and join me to toast the very honorable Steve Galvin. Each year, we invite the past year's honoree to offer a toast. I am pleased to introduce Gladys Devane, community activist, actress, former IU faculty, and all-round amazing person. So Gladys, if you'll make your way to the stage, we're ready for you. Good evening and congratulations, Judge Galvin. It is my honor to welcome you to the Bloomington Rotary Club's Hall of Honorees, <laughs> where the motto is <clears throat> service above self. Service, that is the measuring stick that has brought us together tonight to honor you, Judge Galvin. You have said that what makes the Bloomington community special is friends and mentors. I say what makes the Bloomington community special is people like you, people whose services to this community are unstinting, generous, and selfless, persons who recognize that absolutely nothing in our community is more important than the children. For it is the children of today that will, be, that will become the teachers, the doctors, the lawyers, the entrepreneurs, the leaders of tomorrow. And it is people like you who work hard and who to ensure that our children will become tomorrow will not become tomorrow's appalling statistic that they are given ample opportunity to succeed so on behalf of the entire bloomington community let us raise a glass let us salute and congratulate Judge Stephen Galvin for your contribution to making Bloomington a very special community. Here, here. Thank you. 
It's coming, Steve. I know you think you've dodged the bullet with no one telling any of your really deep, dark secrets, but I got one last chat shot at you, bud. But as the kids say today, no worries. This is all good stuff. Steve, I'm sure that you will remember in 2017 and a little bit before that, the number of child abuse and neglect cases was so high that I was tagged to take on the overflow. You did the heavy lifting, I took a couple cases at the bottom. I came to your office to learn exactly how you processed your cases. You said you came into the Justice Building on Saturdays, and I said, whoa, Saturdays? You pulled up on Saturday the files on each family on your computer for the coming week. You read all the reports that had to be filed on each child, the CASA report, the Division of Family and Children report, 5, 10, 15 pages, the attached reports from social workers and mental health professionals. You reviewed your prior court records identifying why the child was removed from the home, the parental participation orders necessary to ensure child safety before the child could return home, all of this was so you could be fully prepared for the week's coming hearings. Steve, you might not remember this, but when I asked you how you got it all done on Saturday, you said, I came in on Sunday too. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, I give you one last time the incredible Judge Steve Galvin, service above self. So if you'll all raise a toast. Steve, this has been my highest honor to be even just a smidge of a part of this. In closing, we appreciate your support of the three Bloomington Rotary Clubs that come together to put this on, Casa of Monroe County. We sincerely hope to see you again next year, just in case you've got your calendar or your phone, whatever you put it on. It'll be Friday, November 1, 2024, for the 10th annual Bloomington Rotary to Toast. Steve Galvin, you stay right where you are. Anybody who wants can come up and talk to him now. Thank you so much. This is, uh, wow, I'm almost speechless. And I, as anybody who knows me, I'm never speechless. Uh, this is truly an, an honor and a privilege to be here tonight, um, to be named with some of the past honorees, Bob Hamill, Charlotte Zietlow, Zietlo, who called me and said, would you be willing to do this? Um, and I said, well, I don't know if that's my thing, and Charlotte said, they'll give the money to CASA, and I said, all right, I'm in. <laughs> uh, they gave me five to 15 minutes to thank all those who truly need, I need to thank tonight. I have eight pages. Now, I heard that groan. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to subject you to that, but I do have some, I have to, I must thank certain people for certain things. I want to start by thanking all three Rotary Clubs. I've always admired your commitment to community service. And I've always appreciated everything that you do for this community. But you've given me a great gift tonight, a very great gift, to be able to celebrate with my friends, with my family, with this community. I, I mean this from the heart to all of you. Thank you. Thank you to the Rotary for doing this. This is, this is great. This is fantastic. And I especially want to note Cindy York and Jody Hoagland, who put so much effort into this. Thank you. You're the best.
I want to thank, uh, I obviously thank Judge Hill. She's always going to be Judge Hill to me. Um, and Gladys Devane, thank you so much. Lindsay, my, my former boss, always a boss. Kristen Bechet, who's just the best. I'll talk a little bit about CASA in here in just a moment. Judge Dekoff, Mary Ellen, my colleague. Um, you know, you have a tendency to think about just uh, judges as if we're not really people because we're kind of removed at times. And when Mary Ellen and I came in at the, at the first, well, within the first day or so, you put on a black robe and it's different. You're different. Things have changed. I was walking down the hallway and all at once I see Mary Ellen running at me, full bore with her robe on, and she said, I look just like Harry Potter. <laughs> Just let me tell you, that woman got us through COVID. She was our presiding judge. She worked tirelessly. She deserved it. My son, Connor. Dr. <laughs> for all of you who know me, I have, for the last 28 years, told you what an amazing young man Connor is. That he's, uh, he was into catching snakes when he was young, and that he was an all-state wrestler, and that he took up ballroom dancing, and those pictures of him climbing are from El Capitan. Uh, somewhat amazing. I lied. <laughs> lied through my teeth. I've never liked that kid. <laughs> he has always been able to outsmart me, outthink me, outmaneuver me. Thank God for my wife. I'll give a quick example of how he has done so and how he has been a disappointment to me. <laughs> when he was 17 years old, he was applying to go to college and he had applied to Princeton. He wanted to get in. I came home one day and Connor looked at me and said, Dad, I didn't get in. And I felt terrible for him. And I was trying to think of something to make him feel better and I said, son, Remember, only rich students get in. They're parent, children whose parents are rich. And your father is not rich. And if I'd just left it alone. <laughs> but you know, as a dad, you've got to say something to you know, make it a learning experience for him. And I looked at him and I said, Connor, but you know, if you'd worked a little harder, <laughs> you might have gone to Princeton. And he looked at me with that knowing in his eyes and said, no, Dad, if you'd worked a little harder, I'd be going to Princeton. <laughs> All joking aside, um, I've never, I don't think any man's ever had a, a better son than that one. He's the best. I also want to thank all of those who've been a part of the Monroe County Juvenile Court. Um, I think you get the gist of what it means, in some sense, to do what those people do every day. You have to deal with the suffering of children. You see abuse and neglect. You hear stories about things that happen with children that no child should ever have to endure. You hear about the actions of children where they have harmed others. It takes a special breed of people to deal with those issues and to deal with those cases. And quite frankly, they can grind you down. So the people I want to toast myself tonight are some of those people. I want to start with someone who's not here. You've heard a lot about her tonight. Judge Viola Taliaferro was my mentor and my friend. I practiced in front of her for 15 years. I bring her up only because she died this summer. She passed, and I will not forget her. Um, when she was a force of nature, those who knew her 
an outstanding person, and when she decided to retire, she more or less told me, you're going to run for judge. And if you knew Viola, it's like Charlotte, you don't say no to Charlotte, you don't say no to Viola. So that's the reason, one of the reasons why I'm here today. I just wanted to note that, Vi, wherever you are, thank you. And I, if she was here, she'd say, you know where I am. She wouldn't have any doubts. There are several attorneys here tonight. I want to thank the attorneys who've appeared in my court. Um, one of the things I learned as a judge is that the decisions you make are only as good as the evidence that you receive. And when I came out of law school in 1981, I was fortunate enough to have mentors who taught me things such as how to try cases, but more importantly, they taught me that it's a difficult thing to assume the burden of others, to do your job, to do your job for your clients, to protect their property, to protect their families. They taught me that the law is a profession and a calling, and it requires your respect and your commitment. It forces you to put your interests behind you and accept the interests of others. It forces you to value truth, objective truth, above all else. And that's what I've seen from the lawyers in my courtroom. And I can see some of them here, barely, tonight. And I want you to know I thank you for everything you've done. I note we had, that it includes the public defenders, it includes the general members of the bar, it includes the prosecuting attorney's office. And I want to note, it's Rich Hansen's here. Rich, where are you? Rich, that man was my prosecutor for the full time when I was a, a, a uh, judge. Rich Hansen is a special person, and Rich is special because he's not like other prosecutors who look to see what they can do to limit children, to harm children. He has one thought in his mind, and that's what he can do to make things better. During the time that we... He's a great one. He's going to be honored by the Indiana Prosecuting Attorneys Council here in December for that very reason. I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for all those years, Rich. I thank the public defenders. I thank all the attorneys. I want to turn briefly to CASA, the reason that a large part of why we're here. I want to talk about CASAs because they're an extraordinary group, and I don't say that lightly. CASAs are volunteers, but here's the job description. You're going to come in, you're not a lawyer, you're going to go to court. You're going to take on the mantle of giving voice to children who have no voice. You're going to cross-examine witnesses, you're going to be a party. You're going to have to stand up and protect that child. Now, how many people want to sign up for that one? Do they? Well, I can tell you, we've got a lot of them in this room. I'd like the CASAs to stand. Everybody who's a CASA here, please. One moment, don't, don't sit down, don't sit down. You don't get off that easy. Hey, I can still do this. I'm not a judge anymore, you know. Take a look around this room, folks, because I swear to you and I tell you that you're looking at people, but, but for them, there would be the death of children. They are the, in this county, they have been the difference in the lives of children there are children alive today because of what these people did to volunteer. And I cannot thank you. I could not do my job without them. I thank you all for this community. Be seated. There are others that, that function in my court, foster families who have an impossible job. I don't know if we have any of them here, 
but I want to thank them if there are, the DCS attorneys, the DCS caseworkers who've done so much. I also have the honor tonight to thank my probation department. They are, in my opinion, the best in the business. I have two rep three representatives tonight. I have Chris McAfee, Nick Ackerman, Jeff Hartman, Jeff, Chris, between, and Nick, yep. <laughs> These people have a statewide reputation. They get called, they're among the first people to get called when there's some new program, something that needs to be done in the state. This isn't just my opinion, all right? This is a, the opinion of the Indiana uh, Court Administration. And so I just want to make sure I say, and by note, between Jeff and Chris, you guys probably have a total of uh, 10 years, maybe 10, maybe 10 years. <laughs> it's more like 50, and I'm probably undershooting it. They're the best, and I just want to say that. Um, I want to thank a very special group as well. My court reporters are here tonight, all right? They wouldn't have come if they knew I was going to do this. <laughs> Charity Sullivan, Amy Erler, Kristen Gofine, Connie Cron. I'd like you to stand up. Come on. You've heard that these cases involving children and families can be taxing psychologically, emotionally, well, it, it's the truth. It's just as true for these people as it is for everyone who deals with these cases. And fortunately, I had them. They're the best. They have grit. Oh, you sit down. They don't follow, they never followed my orders. They have grit, determination, and compassion, and they, those women are as tough as nails. I've seen them deal with people who are hostile and intoxicated and dangerous and do it with a smile on their face. And I've seen them cry tears when they'd have to hear a story about something that happened with a child that was horrid. I could not have had better people to work with. I want to single out somebody here because it is special. Connie Cron was with me throughout the entire time that I was a judge. She was an employee of Monroe County for almost 45 years. She knows the law better than half the attorneys. I have never seen anyone work harder. I have never known anyone with a better moral compass. She is, this is, these are the definition of public servants. And you know, we have a tendency to take them for granted. Well, that's why you shouldn't, standing right there. Thank you, all of you. Is Judge Harvey here tonight? I didn't see Holly. Holly, where are you? Judge Harvey. Judge Harvey took over my caseload. I just wanted to point out, thank you because <laughs> it's like giving up a child to give away that caseload. These are, these are children that you're, you know, to some extent I think it was said raising, well, you're involved with, sometimes for periods of years. And you want your children to be in good hands, and I couldn't think of anybody better than Judge Holly Harvey. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everyone who's my friend. It's tough for judges. I think Judge Najem would say this, Judge Stafford, uh, Judge, uh, uh, Salt, Judge Saltzman, I want to make sure I'd hit everybody, Judge Decoff, and if I've left somebody out, it's my fault. Um, who do I leave out? Crothy, Judge Crothy. Oh my God, she's got my desk. <laughs> Kara, I'm sorry. Judge Crothy, I apologize. Brad, Judge Bradley, I left Judge Bradley out. Oh my gosh. 
All right, well, see, this is what happens. <laughs> My colleagues are the best, and I've been so fortunate in, in having those co colleagues. I was about to say that it's tough for judges to have friends, and I want to thank all my friends who are here uh, who aren't necessarily involved in the system. We have the writer's table over here to my right. This, these are the Bloomington Bicycle Club that I ride with, and I couldn't think of a better bunch of people. I just want to point that out. All right. I also want to thank my family. Uh, my sister Jackie is here, along with my, her family, her whole family, my cousin Marcia. By the way, Jackie and Marcia were the ones in the picture who had the straight hair, they were in their, they're in their teens and it flips up at the end. Looks like it's been ironed. Nice hair, sis. She's four years older than me and her and Marcia used to pick on me unmercifully. And when we were children, my sister would carry me around by my ankles, wouldn't you? Right? She would carry me around by my ankles and my mother would say, put him down, and she'd go. <laughs> she is totally unrepentant. She says it explains so much about me. She's been a great sister. And I'm very, very proud and pleased to have you as my sister. I turn now to my wife, Tamara. We've been together since 1986. You can see in the pictures we've ridden, we rode cross country together shortly after we met. And she still talked to me <laughs> after that was done. I can tell you this, being a judge's wife, being a judge's spouse is not an easy thing. You miss dinners, you get called in the middle of the night, often in the middle of the night, you miss time with your family, you miss time with your children. That's true for my, with Connor. Tam, when I, when I said I came home and I said I want to be a judge, Tam never blinked. She just looked at me and said, sure, let's do it. I'm not the easiest person to get along with. She stood by me all these years. She's been wise and patient and strong and caring and she's the best thing that ever happened to me. Excuse me. Aww. So, I have one final thing to do. I have a toast of my own. I came to Bloomington in 1978 with the intent of going to law school and leaving. Like so many of you, I stayed, but I stayed because of this community, this unique community, a community that cares deeply about others, a community that values service to others, a community that shows that commitment every single day, a community of which I am overwhelmingly proud to be a member. And as I look around this room, I see that community. So now, I have a toast. To this community and to you, to all of you, I toast you. Thank you so much. Don't move. Okay. Don't, don't go away. One standing ovation should be enough. Now, S Steve, I just want to say one last thing. I know it might have looked like I just sort of screwed up there for getting the most important speaker of the night, but that was all planned, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Right? That was beautiful. <laughs> that was beautiful, bro. You are all excused. Thank you so much. You. But you can come up and talk to you can come up and talk to the judge. Steve will remain on the stage. If you would like to personally congratulate him, please come up. He will be seated over there again. 
the centerpieces are for sale. If you would like to make a donation to CASA, throw some cash on the table and take them, please. We appreciate your support. We look forward to seeing you next year, Friday, November 1st, 2024.